Today I'm going to show you guys how to change lighting in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. You can find me here at Flurn five days a week making videos to help you guys get better at Photoshop and photography. And we do all kinds of stuff at Flurn. We're working on someone's image from the family who sent it in. And if you guys are interested in having your image worked on, you can do so. There's a contact box. You can suggest an episode and you can actually submit your image. So that's what happened here. Lindsay Frost suggested her episode and uh, she sent a picture in, wanted to do some things with the lighting. And so we're gonna do that. We're gonna crop and things like that. So it's kind of like an intermediate um, episode. We're gonna be doing quite a bit of stuff, but I think you guys are gonna learn a lot. So let's go ahead and get into it because we got a ton to cover. All right, the first thing I want to do, this is an awesome photo. I really do like it. There are just a couple of things that are distracting in the photo and we're going to be able to take care of them really without much trouble. So that's, it's a, uh, it's really cool to be able to just kind of like fix some things really quickly. But first you have to identify what the distracting elements are. Uh, first of all, I would say like this shadow over there, I guess it's of a chair or something like that, or maybe it's, that's his arm and that's his arm. I don't know. It kind of looks like a chair. Uh, it's probably their shadows though. So that's kind of distracting. The stuff on the wall back here, I don't really know the significance of all this, these things on the walls, but I would say, in my opinion, it's just a little distracting, so I kind of want to get rid of that too. Now, what we're seeing over here, this kind of lighter color that's going on here, it looks like that's either a lens flare or where the light is just catching the, the actual light source that lit the image. So um, this color, especially like this discoloration in the floor, we can take care of that in Photoshop too. And then we're just going to kind of clean up the wall. Now, the only thing that's kind of like bugs me about the lighting is um, the light sources here used were really hard. So we can see we have hard highlights and then really hard shadows. There's a very strong light between the highlight and the shadow. And using hard lights, there's nothing wrong with using hard light sources. But when you do, make sure you use fill light as well. And that's going to help brighten up your shadows. You can see we have a large area here that's just really dark. So what we're going to do is we're going to brighten that up as well. And that's going to help just kind of like bring the image more to life. So we're going to start off. I'm just going to grab my crop tool and I'm just going to crop this in and um, somewhere right about there, I think is going to help us actually like see the subject a little bit more clearly. Like this doesn't, you don't really need all this information uh, to get across the idea of the image. So something like this, I feel is a little better. Maybe, I don't know, we could go with the rule of thirds with the, with the floor there. And then we have this line kind of coming up there. There we go. So we have a nice diagonal across the frame, which if you guys, uh, we've done episodes on composition, a nice diagonal across the frame using the rule of thirds and intersection is right about there as well. So that's, that's actually a pretty nice crop. And uh, I'm going to hit enter and that takes care of the shadow on the right. So um, <laughs> we're already done a lot of the work, just cropping it out. And I think it helps the image overall too. Let's go ahead and make that invisible. The next thing I'm going to do is take care of what's going on on the wall behind them. Um, so I'm going to grab a regular brush tool. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. And um, what we're going to do, I'm going to hold down alter option and grab some colors here and start painting in. So I'm going to grab a color from the wall. So hold on alter option, which is going to change your brush to a, uh, a thumb, a, uh, what is that? Eyedropper. There we go. And then just start kind of painting this in. There we go. So painting this in on the wall behind your subject, you can just kind of, you're not going to get much detail, but you can always add detail back. And we've covered that in other episodes as well. So picking colors here and just kind of painting over your background wall. Notice I'm using a large brush with a hardness of zero. All right. And just kind of fading those away. So using a large brush, picking these colors, it's going to allow you to create a wall that actually looks realistic, like it's been lit because you don't want to just color with the same or paint with the same color for your entire wall. Um, because you know light does change from one side of the wall to the other so if you if you try to do everything the same color it's really just not going to look good all right and we're almost done with our wall i'm just grabbing a couple colors and kind of painting over there there we go this computer is being a little bit slow i guess it's kind of struggling with this all right and just sample there and paint a little bit in Okay, the wall looks great. So what I'm gonna do now is just load up a layer mask. So we're gonna put a layer mask on there and then I'm gonna bring my brush down a little bit smaller and make it harder. And then we're just gonna paint black on our layer mask right over where our subject is. So we just basically painted everywhere, including covering the subject. And I did want to cover the subject up. It's not like I was being overly sloppy. I wanted to cover the subject up because 
by covering the subject up, you're going to get a um, you're going to get a lot more uh, smooth gradient from the background. In other words, like you don't want to stop painting like right at your subject. You want to keep you want to go until your subject and even cover your subject over, and then use a layer mask. It's like if you guys were making a painting and you wanted to paint a sky, like you wouldn't stop at the ground. Like you'd probably paint the sky all the way down first and then paint the ground over top of the sky. So that's, you know, kind of a tip. Well, if you guys want to paint, then that's a tip for painting as well. Usually you don't like to stop because then you see like the brush strokes and it just looks like, okay, now I painted some sky and then painted some ground. All right, and I'm just going in here with the brush tool and kind of clean this selection up. That's just, you know, you can spend a little bit more time on that if you wanted to. I'm just going relatively quick because that's what I want to do right now. There we go. So we can see we basically took care of a lot of the distracting elements in the background. And those might have been really important for this original image. If they were, what I would probably do is select out maybe like one of them and then make that front and center large there and make it, you know, make that like the element that's important. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna make a new layer on top of everything. I'm gonna make a marquee selection. So let's go ahead and grab our selection of the floor there. All right, and I'm gonna grab my curves adjustment layer. So we made a selection, I'm gonna hit curves. And now what we're gonna do is just kind of try to color this so it's more like the floor. So you can see it has a little bit of blue in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my blue channel and just kind of pull that down. Okay, now we're gonna grab our red channel and pull that up a little bit to stick more reds in there. And we're gonna grab RGB, which is just light and dark, and I'm gonna pull that down. There we go, and that's gonna put a little bit more of that in there too. Cool, that looks great. Let's just put a little bit of green in there. There we go, and now you can see my selection there from the left to the right. I'm gonna take the blue and give it a tiny bit more blue. There we go. I'm just gonna grab my brush tool now and um, we're gonna paint black at about 10% to fade it from left to the right. So we have like this, you know, the coloring that we did over here, we have it affecting that area, but not necessarily, you know, going over the whole floor because the floor on the right actually looks good. Okay, so kind of fixing what's going on with the color here. It, the color, it, it's not exactly right right now, maybe just a little bit less red. This is something that you, it's gonna take a little bit of playing with to get exactly right, but in a second, I think we're gonna get it pretty good. All right, there we go, and a tiny bit less blue. Okay, that's looking much better. So you can do this sort of thing to take care of like anytime you have a lens flare or something like that right over the top of the image. All right, so fixing our floor, really pretty easy. Next thing I wanna do here is we're just gonna brighten everything up. So I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer, we're gonna to go to levels, and here in the RGB, let's just zoom in. This is where I don't really want to grab the RGB slider. I want to grab a green, blue, <laughs> forget what they are. We're going to grab red, green, and blue separately, and that's going to help us control our colors. So let's start off with red. We're going to grab the red slider, and I'm going to change my output level, dragging this from the left to the right. And this is just going to take the darkest point and bring it up. And in this case, it's going to take the darkest point and put more red in it. All right, we're going to do the same thing with green right to about there and then we'll do the same thing with blue and the reason why I'm doing this is to lighten up those shadows that are in our subject you can see before the shadows are really really dark we can't see much detail and there in the after it's a little bit better plus what it's going to do is it's going to help it look like these were lit maybe a little bit warmer as well which I like okay and then here with the highlights you can do the same thing as you play around with your colors and the highlights it's going to change the highlight colors on your overall image so you can do this to kind of color your entire image and lighten it at the same time. All right, let's do a couple more things. I'm just gonna create a vignette on this because I think it will totally work for this type of image and then we'll be done. Really not that long and uh, it's kind of cool. I like this image. So I'm gonna grab a marquee tool. We'll just make a selection right around our subjects and invert that on the layer mask, invert that again and then add a blur to that. All right, so using a vignette, something like this, like it's gonna allow your highlight to kind of like cover your subject and it's gonna make your subject look like they're more the focal point of the image. Again, the reason I'm doing this here is because our shadows are really dark. So to lighten them up, I'm using the curves and that's just gonna make it quite a bit brighter. All right, so we'll make that invisible and then visible again. And you can see the curves just really are brightening that area up. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Let's just grab another curves adjustment layer, 
make that a little bit darker now. And then I'm gonna do the opposite. So we're gonna select out this area, invert that, and then apply a blur to that as well. There we go. And that's just gonna, you don't wanna go like too crazy with it because it'll look like you just did it in Photoshop. But if you can do a slight vignette, it's gonna help draw a little bit more attention to your subject. All right, maybe we'll just brighten that up a little bit there. Okay, cool. So you can see that really didn't take too long. Um, our coloring here, I think there's maybe a little bit too much red in there. So I'm gonna go to my red channel and just pull that down just a little bit. All right, I like that a lot. So it didn't take too long and we basically started off with an image with a lot of distractions and the darks were really, really dark. We eliminated all of our distractions. We went through and basically cleaned up the wall, did some things with the floor, kind of fixed the color there and added some highlights to the overall image and then created our vignette. So it didn't take a whole lot of time and we took an image that um, was a little bit, you know, kind of plain and distracting and made it into something pretty cool and also colored it along the way. That's it. That's all we're doing today. <laughs> I know that's quite a bit, right? But let's see the before and the after because I actually, I think it turned out great. And you guys can see a lot of the time, you know, if you have an image that you think may not be worth saving, this you can do this sort of thing and really get a lot more out of an image and uh, really doesn't take too long. So thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. I'm here five days a week. Find me on Twitter at AKNacer and be sure to like our Facebook page if you like Florin because then I'll come to your house and I'll pat your head because I am proud of you. Bye. I'll pat your head and rub your tummy. Yeah, what do you think about that? You thought I just was good at Photoshop. <laughs> Did you cut it off? You can just, you could cut it there. A little bit more of advanced tutorial. Why is the music on? <laughs>